بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الحمد لله حمدا يوافي نعمه ويكافئ مزيده وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما يا كريم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Welcome all to the 99 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We're looking at a name which goes by Al-Quddus Al-Quddus means the pure one Al-Quddus means the perfect one Al-Quddus is a name In order for us to understand this name We should understand another word that is similar But not the same as Al-Quddus And that is the word At-Tasbih Every single time we do At-Tasbih Every single time we say Subhanallah Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik Whenever we're using the word Subhan And we are referring to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala then we are describing the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does the word subhan mean? Sabaha means to swim. Sabaha yasbahu, and then a pool is called a masbah, right? So, sabaha means to swim. Now when you're swimming, and if you imagine yourself swimming in a lake, for example, an ocean, a water body, that water body comes with a lot of depth. You can keep going deeper, all the way to the dark darknesses of the ocean, right at the waterbed. But the person that's swimming, he is not at the bottom. She's not at the bottom. They're normally right at the topmost part of that ocean. And such is the example of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah is subhan, subhana rabbi al-a'la. How perfect is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we are describing His perfection, what Allah wants for you to think about at that moment is the fact that, look, when you are at the top of the ocean, or when a fish finally makes it way, its way all the way at the top of the ocean, the ones that are at the bottom, they're very deep down in the depths of this ocean, they are far, far beneath. And they are far, far below. It's as if up top is a different league, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is up top. It's as if up top is a whole different league and below all the way down in the deep depths of this ocean is a whole different area. So the difference between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the difference that we notice as we are swimming in the ocean. Far beneath the ocean, in the deep depths of the water, lie a lot of different creatures. But those that are above, they are far, far above. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's league is a whole another league. Allah is Al-Quddus. Allah is the ever-perfect. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ever pure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so pure, so perfect, that they say Allah is not only perfect from imperfections, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is even more perfect from what we think in our minds to be perfections. You see, sometimes we think of our ears as perfection, our hair as perfection. We don't think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these, in these things, except the descriptions that we have of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. So what we know to be perfection in this world might actually be imperfection for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we don't describe him in that fashion saying that he has the perfection of the creation. No, Allah is above even the perfection of the creation. This is the purity. This is the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. Now if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's perfection is such, what then are we supposed to take from this perfection? What we are supposed to first and foremost take from this perfection is that we are imperfect. And we as human beings have a tendency of looking at ourselves and aspects of what we believe to be perfection and dwelling on these aspects of our own personal perfections. And then we end up disdaining other human beings who we feel don't have that same sort of perfection. But when we think about the fact that Allah is above all, Allah's perfection is, is perfect and Allah's purity is ever pure, then we realize that everything below Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always be susceptible to imperfection. The Prophet ﷺ, how perfect was he? وَأَحْسَنُ مِنْكَ لَمْ تَرَى قَطُّ عَيْنِي وَأَجْمَلُ مِنْكَ لَمْ تَلِدِ النِّسَاءُ خُلِقَةَ مُبَرَّأً مِنْ كُلِّ عَيْبٍ كَأَنَّكَ قَدْ خُلِقَةَ كَمَا تَشَاءُ As Hassan ibn Thabit, the poet of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, more beautiful than you, more perfect than you. He's talking about his perfection. More perfect than you, my eyes have never seen. More beautiful than you, women have never bore. You have been created free of all defects. It's as, if, it's as if you've been created just as you yourself wanted to be created. This is the perfection of Rasulullah. But Allah shows us that even Rasulullah wasallam, he had a scar on his face in the battle of Uhud. Even Rasulullah had his teeth broken in the battle of Uhud as well. Why? 
because of the fact that Allah was trying to show us that the most beautiful face within the creation will be inflicted by imperfection. So you recognize that perfection will always be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah alone. The Prophet's camel, Qaswa, was known for traveling at very fast speeds. But the Prophet's camel was, had lost one day as well. And the Sahaba were so sad to see that the camel of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had lost. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa explained at that point that it is a right upon Allah. حَقٌ عَلَى اللَّهِ أَلَّا يَرْفَعَ شَيْءٍ مِّنَ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا وَضَعَهُ It is a right upon Allah that He doesn't raise anything of His creation except that He puts them back down eventually. وَلِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ إِذَا مَا تَمَّ نُقَصَانُ وَلَا يُغَرُّ بِطِيبِ الْعَيْشِ إِنسَانُ هِيَ الْأُمُورُ كَمَا شَاهَدْتُهَا دُوَلٌ مَنْ سَرَّهُ زَمَنٌ سَاءَتْهُ أَزْمَانُ A poet says that for every single thing, when it becomes perfected and complete, it will start going down in its demise. نُقَصَانُ It will start to become defected after that. When you, you become a young man, you're strong, you start to become weak. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this across the board in everything of His creation. So you recognize there's a, that there is imperfection in the creation of Allah and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ever perfect. And through that, we should come to a realization that humility is a must. Because one day you may be perfect or so you conceive yourself to be, but one day you will not be. And that's a reality. Andalus, that was what this poet, that I, the lines that I just shared before you. Andalus was what this poet was talking about. He said, when everything becomes complete, it starts to go downwards. Andalus, Andalusia, the famous, you know, glorious, utopic past of the Muslim Spain was considered the most perfect place in the world to reside in. But it went down and it kept on going down further and it kept on going down further until many of the poets of Andalus describe the, the pain that they had went through. The Andalusian Muslims who were living in glory, knowledge and ease and and everything you can imagine and hope for, but they started going down. And that's why one of the poets, he describes the situation, and he's talking about his country, you know, and he's talking about uh, Murcia. And this, this, this was a place, a location where, you know, ilm had flourished, and things had flourished, and, and, and the dunya had flourished, but he and other people were forced to evacuate this area. All of that, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes you realize that perfection only leads eventually to imperfection. That is in this dunya. Number two, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to know about this name is that Allah is Al-Quddus. Allah is the ever perfect. So you think in your mind about the perfect. Whatever is imperfect in this dunya is imperfect. Get that out of your heart. Start turning your heart to the perfect. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us gain lessons from the perfection of Allah, the purity of Allah, and Allah is beautiful and He loves beauty. Allah is pure, doesn't accept anything except purity.